back on the roof. So no cool call. Um, breaker was tripped, so we're gonna see what's going on. So here we go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make sure we have no voltage. And we do not, sweet. So we're gonna go ahead and just uh, ohm this out. All right, we're doing start to common, which is, and this is a carrier, so that's gonna be blue to black. All right, it's pretty weak. All right, let's try uh, common to start. That's looking normal. Let's try to start to common. Yeah, that's looking good. Now we're going to go to ground. Okay. okay, so we have continuity between running ground, start or run, uh, common and ground, and start and ground. Okay, cool. So now we're going to pull the top off and verify this at the compressor itself. Here's a good reason why you want to check at the terminals. See that? It's been rubbing on this pipe. I don't know if it's actually rubbed through. No, it doesn't look like it rubbed all the way through, but that is a potential. That could have potentially rubbed all the way through and given you um, false reading, which means this compressor could be fine. So that's why we're always going to check at the terminals. Okay, so I finally got that out of there. Got one to ground. Yep. So she is indeed grounded. Yep. Okay, cool. So we need to change out this compressor. So we'll be back. All right. So we're going to go ahead and change out this compressor. I'll show you the access. It's terrible. There's like a big long catwalk that goes all the way to the center of the building. Um, so I had to drag all this stuff. It took me an hour just to get this stuff up here. Uh, but anyway, we're going to start a recovery first. And uh, got a new toy. You saw that short. I picked a couple of these up for like 25 bucks. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get this set up. So I had to haul my recovery equipment all the way down that catwalk. And then up this, and then down there. So yeah. And I still gotta haul a compressor, evacuation pump, uh, torches and all that good stuff. So yeah, this, this is terrible. Okay, now our pressure's not too bad because it's a cold day today, but yeah, we're, I just wanted to try this out. So we dump this in the water. That. And see, it's actually coming down pretty good. So we'll see how long this takes. All right, so I just got the old compressor out of here. Got the recovery machine out. So check that out nothing lines up so that's the suction that's a process line so I got to pinch that off and graze it that's my discharge this is the discharge line so I'm gonna have to come over and down all right so we're all set to go ahead and braze this thing I got my new pipe here so we got braze here we got braze down there we have to pinch that off and then braze there I have this towel pushing up against it so it won't pop out already got all the bolts in Turning on my nitro, purging, got it on braze. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and light up my torch. Um, one of the things I do when I light this up, because if you just light the acetylene, you get all that, that black stuff flying everywhere. Not a big deal when you're outside, but when you're inside, it sticks to the ceiling. It gets all over everything. So one of the cleaner ways to do it is you go ahead and turn on your acetylene and then you just barely crack barely crack your oxygen. When you light it, you can see there's no black stuff. So I have my nitrogen on my liquid side, so I'm gonna start with my liquid, or my discharge, and then uh, we'll go ahead and patch that up. So we're gonna get our joint nice and hot. Get the bottom nice and hot.
because now we need to go ahead and um, pinch this off. All right, so we'll go ahead and pressure up with nitrogen to make sure we didn't miss a spot. I'm a little concerned there's a spot at the bottom of this. Um, so we'll see. If if it does leak, though, I'm going to take this lower panel off so I can get better access to it because there's these pipes are in the way. coming through here so I'm gonna do this side first. You don't need your torch as hot as you would for like bigger pipes. Alright, cool. We got the bottom heated up. Now we're gonna we got the top heated up, I'm sorry. Now we're gonna do the bottom. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna go ahead and touch it right there. And then it's going to melt like that and it should just all fall to the other side like that. Probably put a little too much solder on there. There we go. Almost done. Same deal. Get this all nice and hot. Underneath. And we'll go ahead and just touch our solder to it. And then it's going to liquefy like that. And then we're pulling it under, do the other side. So. There we go. And we are done. Clean our brazes. And we will go ahead now and pressurize the system to 300 PSI, assuming my braces don't leak. <laughs> All good. And that click was the reversing valve because now it has discharge pressure to actually move. And then uh, we're going to get this thing holding at 300 PSI. And if it holds, we'll go ahead and get our vacuum going. And as it's vacuuming, I'm going to change out the uh, contactor. And uh, I'm going to check that run cap because that run cap actually looks pretty new. It looks like it's 35.5. They gave me a 35, but it's a dual. So I'd rather just, yeah, this is just a single. I would rather change the dual. Okay, so we're going to let her stabilize for about 10 minutes. And then uh, we'll start our clock and then go from there. So in the meantime, I'll start cleaning up my mess here. All right, we're at 315.7 and 314.6. Uh, it's been about, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Uh, but yeah, everything seems to be good. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the refrigerant and, or I'm sorry, remove the nitrogen and then we'll go ahead and get the vacuum started. All right, we got our vacuum pump running. She's at seven, 6,000. Yeah, so anyway, I'm gonna get all this stuff back down and then by the time I'm done with that I'm sure it'll be uh, done but uh, I still haven't taken a lunch I'm starving anyway we'll be back once the vacuum's done all right we're back it's after lunch 105 microns it's about 120 130 maybe yeah we're gonna call her good so we're gonna go ahead and get our refrigerant tank all set up and ready. I'm gonna purge all our lines and all that good stuff and then charge this bad boy up. And I know you're saying, well, why, why are you using R22? Just put in a drop in, drop in suck. This is designed for R22, that's what goes into it. I try not to use conversions unless I absolutely have to. And they agreed to use R22, so that's what we're using. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get set up. Got all everything purged out. We'll start with our liquid line. Zero that out, 
and we're going to 4.88 pounds. So here we go. Alrighty, so we got our, our refrigerant charged in. We're gonna go ahead and put new Schrader cores in. I'll have to reconnect that because some dummy decided that it'd be a good idea to put the disconnect on the freaking panel. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and cycle there. I have no idea which thermostat it is and I can't really do anything when that panel's on there. So that's great. But uh, yeah, there's no call right now. So that's why the contactor hasn't closed. So uh, hopefully we get a call soon. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean all this up, get the panel on there, get power to it, and go from there. All right, well, the thing just turned off, but uh, when I first turned it on, there was no voltage because the breaker was tripped. So anyway, um, I can't find the thermostat. It was running, uh, but then it's satisfied. So anyway, just to show you. She works. Yeah, so... Um, it just satisfied so i don't know what a thermostat is i i thought i found it but apparently that's not the right one but anyway uh hopefully this helps you out if you come across uh, a bad compressor so thanks for watching make sure you like and subscribe comment tell me what a horrible technician i am hit that bell notification and follow me on instagram and facebook thanks for watching